The, um, the Pilates Reformer, uh, patented by Joseph Pilates, uh, 1921-22. Um, it, it's a simple device. Uh, it is, in essence, it's a furniture dolly, piece of plywood with four wheels uh, in an aluminum frame uh, that goes back and forth, back and forth. It has springs on it. And the springs provide resistance because in Pilates, what we want to do is try to stretch out the spine. And while the spine is stretching out, we want to go in there and build muscle so that the muscle helps keep that space in between the vertebra. So it's not just passive discs. Now, historically, the problem is the reformer since its inception uh, has not changed much in design. Uh, yes, it was originally made from wood in the 40s or so, 50s, uh, they changed to aluminum, but by and large, it was the same design all the way through. It's welded, it's heavy, uh, it does not break down for shipping. If a studio purchases three reformers, a pallet truck will come uh, and it will drop these large crates on the sidewalk and the studio owner is looking at the ordeal of getting these things in the studio and if it's a walk up or if it's a second floor, uh, that's a struggle. They have to bring these crates up into the studio, unpack them and set them up. Second thing is the cost of shipping something like that. Uh, th there's just a phenomenal cost involved with that because of the size and what you have to pay to crate the reformer for shipping. And thirdly, all of that means that the manufacturing also uh, adds a lot to the cost. Uh, what you see here that I'm sitting on is a reformer that is of uh, conventional, traditional uh, dimensions. But because it's all made out of pipe and tube and fittings, it all breaks down uh, into one tube that's just about 10 inches in diameter. It's about seven feet, three inches tall. And everything you see here fits uh, into this. So uh, a single person uh, with a hand truck uh, can maneuver this uh, any place it needs to go. If one were ever to move, uh, they can break it down and get it in the back of their car uh, and bring it to a new location. Uh, because there is no welding involved uh, in this uh, manufacturing, uh, the cost uh, of assembling this is much less. So there's just far greater flexibility in terms of pricing because of the shipping and the manufacturing. That, that, that was the goal. And the fact that it all fits into this tube uh, is just uh, a miracle, but it does. And it takes just about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, to reassemble it, uh, pulling everything right out of the tube. Uh, so that, that's pretty much the accomplishment of everything that we had desired to do.